This is the Boyle 50 anesthesia machine. It is a very basic anesthesia machine, but it turns out was the prototype for the anesthesia machines probably in the next 40 to 50 years. Up until the time that the electronic machine came into being, basically all of the functions of this machine were incorporated in a more sophisticated manner uh, into machines that followed. We can see here that it's a basic uh, three gas machine with uh, vaporizers and it uh, has very few of the modern safety features. So if we start over at the flow meters, we can see there's nitrous oxide, there's nitrogen, and there's oxygen. The oxygen knob does have the fluted uh, feel to it that came about uh, a number of years ago. Air was not available at the time, so they used nitrogen and made air uh, with a combination of oxygen and nitrogen. The gauges in the back are for nitrous oxide and oxygen, and this is the pipeline gauges, but they're reasonably uh, difficult to read. The gauges for the tank pressures were located on top of the tanks. This is the oxygen tank here. This would be the nitrous oxide, and this would be the nitrogen tank. There was no central supply of nitrogen, so it only came from the tank. This machine did have what's called a fail-safe mechanism. That means that as long as there's at least 25 psi pressure in the oxygen line, the nitrous oxide and the nitrogen were allowed to flow. If the pressure in the oxygen line fell below that, it would shut off uh, the gases. We can demonstrate that the oxygen and nitrous oxide are both flowing, and we'll demonstrate the fail-safe mechanism. If we discontinue the oxygen, we can see quickly that both the nitrous oxide and the oxygen will cease to flow. So now we're going to restore the oxygen pressure either by reattaching to the wall pressure or uh, opening the tank. This will allow the nitrous oxide or the nitrogen once again to flow. Now the modern anesthesia machines have protection at the flow meter level which are known as proportioning systems. That means that in the modern machine you can't give less than 25% oxygen. However, this machine did not have that feature. As you can see, when we turn off the oxygen, we can still give 100% nitrous oxide from the flow meter. So it has a functioning fail-safe, but it does not have a proportioning system. Similarly, uh, we could give 100% nitrogen as well. Now, this machine did not come with any sort of vaporizer interlock. This interlock here and this bar in the back was added uh, after the machine was uh, in use. This interlock would then prevent you from giving more than one anesthetic agent at a time. The slot in the locking mechanism allows that one vaporizer to be turned on. When another gas is selected, or another vaporizer is selected, then the others are blocked by the physical presence of this uh, stop mechanism. After the gases were blended and went through the vaporizer, they would then exit here at the common fresh gas outlet. Note again that this is simply a slip connector there is no safety feature here to keep this from accidentally disconnecting. The fresh gases would then travel here to the inspiratory valve, through the inspiratory valve, to the patient, and back through the expiratory valve. 
it would take one of two pathways, either down this pipe through the CO2 canister, or it would go out through the pop-off valve here to the scavenging. Note that the scavenging is, in this case, still 19 millimeter connector, and these were purple, or there was sometimes a blue scavenging hose. The reservoir bag for the scavenging, which can be seen down here, was 19 millimeters and distinguished from the regular bag by the yellow collar, which it was 19 millimeters. The regular circuit components are 22 millimeters. Newer machines now have changed the 19 to a 30 millimeter connector uh, to make it uh, less likely that you could miss, mix the connections between the circuit and the scavenging. The scavenging uh, block is seen here was still in use up till uh, a few years ago. The uh, ventilator would connect here and the sections from the wall would connect here and was controlled by the needle valve. The same uh, it was true of many machines uh, years afterwards. If we take the top off of the machine, we can see the internal piping system. Again, this was very similar to machines up until a few years ago when they developed uh, electronic uh, mixing. If we start here with the oxygen tank, which can be up to 2,000 PSI, this is the reducing valve that reduces that pressure down to 45 PSI right here. The wall oxygen comes in here and then mixes or joins the tank pressure. The wall oxygen is 50, therefore you would preferentially use the wall oxygen over your tank pressure. Oxygen has many jobs and the first one that we see here is it comes here off the 50 PSI and goes directly to our oxygen flush valve which is right here. So when you push the flush valve that bypasses all of the flow meters and vaporizers and goes directly to the fresh gas outlet. Another job that the oxygen has is to pressurize the fail-safe valve. Remember we said that at least 25 PSI of pressure was necessary in order for the other gases to flow. So here we see the oxygen uh, coming to the nitrous oxide fail-safe valve, which is right here. So nitrous oxide comes from the wall, and it also comes from the tank, and joins here, and if there's not at least 25 PSI then a pressure, then no nitrous oxide can flow uh, to the flow meters. If we look at the nitrogen reducing valve, we can see that it's coming from the nitrogen tank and reducing the 2,000 PSI again to 45 to 50 PSI here before it goes to the flow meter. But also, since there is no wall nitrogen, this silver portion here is actually the fail-safe valve. So this is a combination reducing valve and fail-safe valve. And again, the oxygen here is pressurizing the fail-safe valve. If there's not 25 PSI or greater pressure, then no nitrogen can flow. So then we can see that the oxygen comes from here and goes to the flow meter. Similarly, the nitrogen here goes to the flow meter and the nitrous oxide here goes to the flow meter once the failsafe valve has uh, allowed it to pass. The gases then travel up the flow meters and across, uh, either going into the vaporizers or bypassing them and then comes down this tube here, which is the mixed gas, and this gas then comes through a back check valve and then out the common gas outlet. 
So we can see that these uh, piping has a very specific purpose. Oxygen has many uh, purposes, and that's why most of this tubing belongs to the oxygen uh, pipeline and tank. Uh, without the oxygen, then none of the fail-safes would be activated, and there would be no uh, gas to come to the patient.